Hi, my name is Carrie Huang, and I'll be talking about the anti-HBS antigen antibody. First, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for allowing, uh, inviting me to give this talk today. Here are my disclosures. I am an employee and stockholder of Veer Biotechnology. So in terms of neutralizing HBS antigen antibodies, chronic HBV is a viral disease that results in mean dysfunction. And one of the major aims to achieve functional cure of HBV infection is to remove these tolerogens and to stimulate and enhance the immune system. Highly specific neutralizing antibodies can lower levels of circulating HBS antigens as well as viremia in people with chronic HBV. However, only a small subset of plasma-derived proteins contain IgGs that are specifically directed against HBV and therefore require high dose and cost. Preclinical data in humanized mouse HBV model demonstrated that a human IgG1 monoclonal antibody, HBC34, was able to lower levels of viremia and HBS antigen in vivo in HBV and HBV HDV co-infected mice. And it also demonstrated that it was efficiently prevented viral spreading in vivo at lower doses. VIR 3434 is an engineered human antibody against HBS antigen with multiple potential mechanisms of action. The first mechanism of action is inhibition of viral entry or neutralization. The second mechanism is cross presentation to and stimulation of T cells or a vaccinal effect, which I'll describe uh, in the next slide. And the third mechanism is clearance of HBS antigen, as well as delivery to these uh, peptides to dendritic cells. And this can uh, affect both virions and uh, SVPs. One of the unique characteristics of uh, VR3434 is that it's an FC engineered antibody that has a potential therapeutic vaccine for HBV. In this case, the GALI mutation is introduced into the FC domain of the antibody. Uh, there's generation of immune complexes and these immune complexes bind to FC receptors on dendritic cells. With this uh, modification in the FC domain with the GALI mutation, these activate the FC gamma receptors 2A and 3A <clears throat> while also inhibiting uh, the FC gamma receptor 2B. This results in dendritic cell maturation and antigen presentation and generation of effector T cells, which can uh, subsequently lead to durable HBV specific immunity. In addition, uh, VR3434 also has an LS uh, mutation that's introduced into the FC domain that increases half life. In terms of uh, preliminary PK of your 3434 after a single sub-Q dose or IV dose in healthy volunteers, uh, 3434 was absorbed after sub-Q injection with a medium Tmax of three to seven days and with a preliminary half-life of approximately 25 days. As you can see in the graph, there's dose proportional increases in Cmax and AUC uh, were observed across the subcutaneous ranges dosing from 90 to 900 milligrams. In addition, intersubject variability uh, was approximately 35% for all PK parameters, and bioavailability of 3434 following sub-Q administration was approximately 76%. Safety from this uh, study demonstrated that 3434 was very well tolerated in this healthy volunteer population. Subsequently, uh, uh, this uh, monoclonal antibody was studied in uh, patients in the 1002 study. In this study, in Part B, single ascending doses of uh, VR 3434 were uh, evaluated in virally suppressed uh, patients uh, with S antigen levels less than 3,000 IUs per ml. In the dark blue, uh, these are, uh, are cohorts that have already completed dosing. In part B, uh, eight participants per cohort were randomized six to two to receive a single dose of VR3434 or placebo by sub-Q injection. And preliminary uh, blinded safety and tolerability results from this study four weeks post-dose are presented for the part B cohorts. And this was presented earlier this year at EASL. 
terms of the objectives of this study, it was to evaluate the safety and tolerability of 3434 in adult participants with HPV infection without cirrhosis. Secondary objectives included assessing antiviral activity of 3434 uh, in chronic HPV infection, to characterize the CRMPK of uh, 3434 adult participants with chronic HPV, as well as to evaluate the immunogenicity or induction of antidrug antibodies of 3434 in adult participants. The key in, uh, entry criteria for Part B are shown here. Uh, inclusion criteria, uh, these participants were uh, chronically infected with HBV infection, with HBV DNA less than 100 IUs per ml, with negative anti-HBS antibody. These participants were also on NRTI therapy for greater than or equal to two months and E negative. In addition, uh, for cohort 1B, the six milligram sub-Q cohort, enrolled participants had uh, HBS antigen less than 1,000 IUs per ml. And then at the 18 milligram dose, uh, they had HBS antigens less than 3,000 IUs per ml. And exclusion criteria are shown here. Uh, 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 participants with significant fibrosis or cirrhosis were excluded as well as with these uh, different parameters for ASTLT as well as creatinine clearance. Uh, demographics and baseline characteristics are shown here. Just want to highlight in the last row, you know, baseline HBS antigen uh, mean levels uh, were 197 for cohort 1B at the 6 milligram dose and about 837 uh, for cohort 2B at the 18 milligram dose with quite a wide range of uh, baseline HBS antigen levels. Shown here is the preliminary safety and tolerability data. Uh, from, from these two initial cohorts. Uh, there were no significant laboratory uh, abnormalities or changes in liver function tests that were observed. Uh, no uh, infection site reactions were observed and no participant developed clinical or laboratory signs of immune complex disease. When looking at uh, ALT levels over time, uh, in both of these uh, cohorts at six and 18 milligrams, there were no graded ALT uh, or values above upper limit uh, of normal were dis, uh, observed and no clinical, clinically significant changes in other liver related laboratory parameters. <clears throat> Looking at the preliminary HBS antigen change from baseline, here in yellow, we show the six milligram cohort uh, you can see uh, the two placebo uh, participants at the top, which had uh, little, if any, change in HBS antigen. And then you can see uh, in the other uh, participants in this cohort, uh, you had at least a one log decline uh, in HBS antigen levels uh, up to at least day seven uh, before rebound. When we look at the 18 milligram cohort, again, you see the two placebo participants that had minimal changes. And then in those who had uh, significant responses to the 18 milligram dose group, you could see that at least uh, one and a half log uh, declines were observed in this cohort, uh, which also had a higher uh, baseline HBS antigen level to begin with. There were two participants labeled here, one and two, who had less uh, response than what was expected in, uh, you know, based on uh, what we would expect from the PK. When we looked at the free PK levels, in these participants, uh, in uh, participant one, uh, free 3434 levels were undetectable in all available samples. And in participant two, uh, 3434 concentrations were much lower than anticipated in all the available samples over time. So to summarize this slide, most participants rapidly achieved greater than one log decline in HBS antigen. Maximum reductions were generally observed within seven days. The largest reductions in S antigen were in the 18 milligram cohort and full analysis of the 3434 PK and uh, HBS antigen complexes uh, disposition is ongoing. So in conclusion, in virally suppressed participants with S antigen levels less than 3000 IUs per ml, a single dose of six milligrams or 18 milligrams of VR3434 resulted in rapid reductions as S antigen. Now, with maximum reductions generally observed within one week. Single doses were also generally well tolerated with all AEs graded one to two. 
these data support the potential for 3434 to have a meaningful role in the functional cure of chronic HBV infection by lowering uh, the amount of HBS antigen. And ongoing studies are evaluating 3434 in cohorts with higher single doses of 3434, as well as cohorts with participants with higher baseline S antigen levels and in those with viremia. In addition, a current study is ongoing combining 3434 with BR2218 and siRNA in the phase two March study. Thank you very much for your attention.